Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 7.2 Finding Critical Values Part 2. Here is the exam style question. A restaurant owner notices that her customers typically choose lasagna one-fifth of the time. She changes the recipe and believes this will change the proportion of customers choosing lasagna. She takes a random sample of 25 customers. Part A, find at the 5% level of significance the critical region for a test to check her belief. The probability in each table should be as close as possible to 0.025. So let's have a look at part A of the exam style question. I'm going to start off by stating the test statistic. So let capital X be the test statistic. Then we know that X is equal to the number of customers that choose lasagna from a sample of 25 customers. So X is equal the number of customers that choose lasagna from a sample of 25 customers. Now I'm going to state the distribution for X. So X takes on a binomial distribution we're looking at 25 customers, hence 25 trials, and a fixed probability P, where P is equal 1 over 5. A restaurant owner notices that her customers typically choose lasagna one-fifth of the time. So P is equal to 1 over 5. Now I'm going to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Let's start off with the null hypothesis, H0. This is what we're assuming to be correct. So we're assuming that customers typically choose lasagna one-fifth of the time. So P is equal 1 over 5. H1 is the alternative hypothesis. This is what we're trying to test. She changes the recipe and believes this will change, change the proportion of customers choosing lasagna. So in H1, we've got P not equal to 1 over 5. Hence, we have a two-tailed test. Now, for a two-tailed test, we need to take the significance level and divide it by two. So we've got 5% significance level. We divide that by two. We get 2.5% as our answer. Now, 2.5% is equivalent to 0.025. Okay, now, we've got N equal 25, and we've got P equal 1 over 5. For a two-tailed test, to find the critical region, we're going to be looking at a lower critical region and a upper critical region. So for the lower critical region, shorthand LCR, we have let C1 be the lower critical value. Okay, so now C1 is the, for the lower critical region, we're looking at the scenario P is less than. Okay, so C1 is the largest value. Why? Because if we go back to our inequality over here, we've got less than, we do the opposite of that. So we're taking the largest value such that probability X is over here, we've got less than. So over here, we put less than or equal to C1 is less than the significance level divided by 2 because it's a two-tailed test. Okay, so we're looking at 0.025. So now I'm going to use the binomial cumulative distribution function table with n equal 25, p equal 1 over 5 to work out the largest value C1 such that this probability is less than 0.025. Okay, so we've got n equal 25 and we've got p equal 1 over 5 which is equal to 0 0.20. Hence, we're looking at this column over here. We want to find the largest value of C1 such that probability X is less than or equal to C1 is less than 0.025. Let's have a look at the first probability. It is 0.0038. That is less than 0.025 and it corresponds to lowercase x equals 0. The second probability is 0.0274. This is more than 0.025 and it corresponds to lowercase x equals 1. So perhaps our lowercase x should be 0, hence c1 is equal 0. But we can't just conclude like that because we've got an extra condition enforced. In the question, it says that each tail should be as close as possible to 0 
So what I need to do now is work out the difference between this probability and 0 0.025 and the difference between this probability and 0 0.025 to determine which one of these two probabilities is closer to 0 0.025. And that there will help me conclude, will it be the lowercase x equals 0 that I take as my C1 value or will it be lowercase x equal 1 that I take as my C1 value? Ladies and gents, we know that the lowercase x represents C1 and we've used the binomial cumulative distribution function table to find the largest value, C1, such that this probability here is less than 0 0.025. So this corresponds to lowercase x equals 0. However, let's go back to the technicality of the question. We want each tail to be as close as possible to 0 0.025. So we've got an extra condition that we need to look at. Hence, we're going to move on to the next probability, which is 0 0.0274. This corresponds to lowercase x equal 1. Now I'm going to calculate the difference between this probability and 0 0.025 and the difference between this probability and 0 0.025. Let's start off with this probability here. So the difference is 0 0.0212. And for this probability, the difference is 0 0.0024. So that difference there is smaller than this difference here. Hence, hence, ladies and gents, we know that the C1 has to correspond to lowercase x equal 1. So lowercase x is equal 1. This implies that C1 is equal 1. So the lower critical region is therefore x is less than or equal to 1. That is the LCR. Now... I'm going to show you how to find the upper critical region of this two-tailed test. Ladies and gents, the low critical region has a low critical value, hence it follows on that the upper critical region will have an upper critical value. Let's have a look at how to find the upper critical region. Shorthand UCR. Let C2 be the upper critical value. Now, the lower critical region corresponds to P is less than, hence the upper critical region corresponds to P is more than. Since we've got more than over here, we are trying to find the opposite, hence we're trying to find the smallest value. So C2 is the smallest value such that probability X is, since we've got greater than over here, we put greater than or equal to, C2 is less than the significance level divided by 2. So in this scenario, we're looking at 0 0.025. Now, I cannot use a binomial cumulative distribution function table as of yet because I've got greater than or equal to. I need to rewrite this probability so that it's in terms of less than or equal to. So the equivalent form of this probability here would be 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to C2 minus 1. This has to be less than 0 0.025. I can take the 1 to the right hand side, so 0 0.025 take away 1 will give us the following result. It will be minus 0 0.975. Okay, so now I can divide both sides of the inequality by negative 1. This will flip the less than to greater than. So I've got probability x is less than or equal to c2 minus 1, which has to be greater than 0 0.975. So now I'm going to be using n equal 25 and p equal 1 over 5 with the binomial cumulative distribution function table to find the smallest value of C2 such that this probability over here is more than 0 0.975. Again, I've got n equal 25 and I've got p equal 0 0.20. So this is the column that I'm interested in. Now I want to determine the smallest value of C2 such that probability x is less than or equal to C2 minus 1 is more than 0 0.975. I'm going to skip a few probabilities and I'm going to start off with this one here. 0 0.8909 is less than 0 0.975. This corresponds to lowercase x equals 7. We have to move on. The next probability is 0 0.9532. That is less than 0 0.975. This corresponds to lowercase x equal 8. Next one, 0 0.9827, on the other hand, is a probability which exceeds 0 0.975. So this corresponds to lowercase x equal 9. So perhaps lowercase x is equal 9, hence C2 minus 1 is equal 9. However, if you go back to the question, there's an extra condition enforced. We want each tail to be as close as possible to 0 0.025. 
So as a safety check, I'll move on and I'll also consider this probability over here, 0 0.9944, which corresponds to lowercase x equal 10. So now I'm going to work out the difference between this probability 0 0.9827 and 0 0.025 and the difference between this probability 0 0.9944 and 0 0.025 to determine which one of these two probabilities is closer to 0 0.025. That will help me conclude if the lowercase x would be 9, hence the c2 minus 1 is equal 9, or if the lowercase x would be 10, hence c2 minus 1 is equal 10. Okay, so we know that lowercase x represents c2 minus 1, and we've used the binomial cumulative distribution function table to find the smallest value c2 such that this probability here exceeds 0 0.975. This corresponds to x equal 9. But let's go back to the technicality of the question. We want each tail to be as close as possible to 0 0.025. So we want the lower tail and the upper tail to be as close as possible to 0 0.025. Now, we take one step forward and we work out the next probability from the table, which is 0 0.9944. And now I'm going to take the difference between this probability and 0 0.025 and the difference between this probability and 0 0.025. So here is my first difference which is 0 0.9577. Here is my second difference, which is 0 0.9694. We can see that 0 0.9577 is smaller, hence the lowercase x corresponds to 9. So if x corresponds to 9, we know that c2 minus 1 has to equal 9, hence c2 is equal to 10. Right, so the upper critical region UCR is, go back to the original condition, x is greater than or equal to c2, so we've got x is greater than or equal to 10. Hence, overall critical region will be written as x is less than or equal to 1, or the union means or, x is greater than or equal to 10. That is the critical region of this two-tailed test. Let's have a look at part B of the exam style question. Find the actual significance level for this test. We know that the actual significance level is equal to the probability of the critical region. For this scenario, the critical region was calculated in part A. It is x is less than or equal to 1, or x is greater than or equal to 10. So in part B, to work out the actual significance level, shorthand ASL, we take the probability of the critical region. So probability of x is less than or equal to 1, union, which means or, x is greater than or equal to 10. These two events over here are mutually exclusive, so we can work out the probability of each separately. And once we've got the answers, we can add them together. Let's start off with this one here. Since we've got less than or equal to, we can directly use the binomial CD function in our class with calculator to work out this probability. So using the binomial CD function in my class with calculator, I get that this probability is equal to 0 0.0274 plus. Now for this one over here, we have to rewrite it in terms of less than or equal to before we use the binomial CD function. So this probability here is equivalent to writing 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 9. So I can work out this probability here using the binomial CD function in my class with calculator because I've got less than or equal to. So I've got 0 0.0274 plus this probability, which is 1, minus this probability here. So it'll be 1 minus 0 0.9827. You can put that into brackets to indicate this one probability here. So if I put this all into my calculator, my final answer will be 0 0.0447 as a probability in decimal form. But I'm going to change it into a percentage. I can simply multiply it by 100 and I would get 4.47%. So that there is the actual significance level. That there, ladies and gents, completes part B of the exam style question and this teaching video 7.2, Finding Critical Values Part 2. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.